the topic is probably very difficult to understand. And I will explain why. This subject is very much interdisciplined. And um, I do not believe that many of you can understand, but if you get some top level, that's good enough, all right? Because I do have a tutorial online and I encourage you to uh, watch the YouTube tutorial. There are quite a few tutorials there. The topic is about conscious learning and we are not there yet. Mainly the contribution is the uh, understanding and the modeling and the algorithm. The uh, a major challenge right now is the hardware because the, uh, you need the chip to learn in real time. The outline, I will talk about why we need a conscious learning. And many of my colleagues, um, they said, John, it's not necessary. And I don't agree with them. And there was a unified framework for different tasks. Hopefully that we will see that many tasks need the same unified framework. And I'll talk about the first machine thinking model. And uh, then the first conscious learning model, then uh, first 3D to 2D to 3D machine conscious learning model. In other words, that this number five, you will not have calibration, will not calibrate either sensor or motor. Then uh, talk about conscious learning theory. And uh, then uh, I talk about how you can learn in a general fashion without giving a task, right? If you don't have a task, how can you enable a child or baby learn, right? Do we think the baby has a task? No, they don't have a task. They just, just live and they pick up a task on the fly. Then our design chip is a great challenge. I will mention that, discuss a little bit. Then I'll go to the conclusion. Many of you probably don't believe what I said. And uh, the first issue in information field was announced by the third world science and technology developmental forum co-sponsored by UNESCO in 2021. The person here, he's a member of uh, academic science in China, Chinese called Yuan Si. He said, the, uh, there are 10 scientific issues concerning human social development. In the information field, the first issue is how does the human brain process information and how do humans form intelligence? Uh, I get a snapshot of the video here. So uh, the first question is how does a human brain process information and how do human form intelligence? I was kind of reluctant to say, but I need to tell the truth from my understanding. This issue is solved in the model I present. Many people probably don't believe so, but you can understand that if you don't have an understanding what to mean by solved, then you probably don't believe what I said here. Okay, have a given example. Suppose I have a mathematical addition has been solved. All right, five plus four equal to nine because you know the criteria, then you can understand that, oh, it's a soft. But for the brain problem, you don't know the criteria. So it's very difficult for you to understand or you believe what I said. Somebody came up to you and said, oh, this problem has been solved, at least in algorithm, in the uh, theory. So it provides the first algorithm solution to the question. You probably keep your doubt. Um, that's very natural because I talk to many people, including a person you probably know him, Pu Mu Ming. He is the director of a Chinese Brain Project, all right, uh, the program. He's uh, very much behind. Uh, he read my paper I sent to him, and he couldn't. I don't think he can understand it, but he did not make any comments. John, I cannot make comments. But after a few days, two important scientists start to say that China needs to look into very fundamental problems. It's not a brain cannot be solved. Right. I'm not saying that Pumu Ming agrees that I solved the problem. I don't say that. So the existing conscious theory, there are three. There are theories only. There is no algorithm for them. Theory, theory of consciousness by Bas, 
microtubular quantum physics based by Penrose and integrated information theory by Christopher Koch. But they don't understand the problem. They don't understand the solution. They give some kind of a gist of it. And the brain is like elephant, and each discipline is like a brain man, all right? And no discipline can understand I solve a, a brain problem because they only touch a surface, a part of surface. So the issue is very interesting right now. So the uh, first algorithm that I think that at least algorithmically solve the problem is implementable and testable. And uh, you need to solve $21 million problems in order to address this issue because there are many, many technical issues, at least 20. So the solution is either none of the problem can be addressed or you solve all because brain does all. Brain solve all $20 million problems. So look at the consciousness. And I have a lot of these people that work with me and he's my colleague. He refused to even answer my question. I said, do you think that reaching and robotics control need a conscious learning. He tried to avoid. He will not really answer my question because he probably feels that there are some consequences if he reply my questions. So that's human consciousness, all right? He already understand that he would rather not answer my questions. So what do you mean by consciousness? State of being aware, something within oneself, or external objects, state of facts, the second level, a state of sensation, emotion, volition, and thought. The third is totality of conscious state of individual, like a child, like your father, your mother. Number four, normal state of conscious life. You have a consciousness about your life. Are you doing well or you are not doing well? Where are you going? What's your goal? Number five, up state of a mental life of which the person is aware, all right? What's the situation you are? Now, those definitions are defined by a well-respected uh, dictionary, Marion Webster, but I think they are ad hoc. I have a new definition and from the systematic point of view because the dictionary writers, they don't know how to write in a computationally general way. So consciousness by definition is a longer and a higher context than any immediate context. So basically, Wider, broader, but I don't use broader, I use longer because we don't have a broader view in the first view. We need to have multiple view. We think at different times, so it's longer in time. Longer in time means broader. Higher means conceptually it's long higher. So why the new definition of consciousness to be more systematic instead of ad hoc dictionary definitions, more holistic, and has larger scale, all right? Included in longer in time. That's what I said in the earlier. This one is very controversial. According to new science of conscious learning, I think it's a new science. Many people probably object to me. All ideologies or isms are all non-holistic and short-sighted, including our well-respected religion, nationalism. We are patriotic. I love United States. I love China, for example. Democracy. Democracy is like our ideal. Capitalism, socialism, communism, they are all short-sighted. Why? Because they are called ideologies. If you have a name for certain isms, then that ism is short-sighted. And I wrote a letter to somebody in the United States and China, seven Days later, somebody in China, Zhao Lijian, and he said that in economy, you should not be based on ideology. Maybe he agreed with me. So give example of uh, conscious learning. Now I talk about perception because it's pretty narrow. Perception, people say where, what, right? Give example that you have a feature here that's vertical, and you have vertical, then you have a feature here is horizontal. If you learn feature here, you will not translate into the other position. And uh, in fact, it's not true. And if you have time, read my tutorial, we'll talk about it. Human 
subconsciously learn transfer learning in perceptual learning, right? The perceptual transfer. And this work is by, by a scholar in Beijing University. And I respect his work very well. And Xiao is his student. Now you said that, oh, we need to program a robot to learn reaching, to do grasping, to do navigation. I said that babies start to learn at an early place. They self-initiate content. They do reaching, they do manipulation. Task is not given by parents. This is called solitary learning. Parents are not around. They are learning. They build a brain by themselves, learn on the fly. Now in a more complex situation, you have a, a child, you have multiple children, you have a parent, they're all intact. They're all intact. There's no model. There's no model that one person I model, this one model, this, and the model came up on the fly. I was a, probably the first guy who did a stereo vision in the SLAM. You probably know SLAM, L-S-A-M. Simultaneous location and uh, modeling. That one, I was doing that one, I regret it, all right? Because this project's too difficult. I don't see hope. I published in PAMI, but I regret it. And I looked at neuroscience, psychology, I realized I was wrong. It's not just our engineers are stupid, not because our computational power is not enough, not because our algorithm is not enough, because we are on the wrong track. So big track, I will have a lot of shocks here. Big data, big data is a junk. Don't listen to National Science Foundation. National Science Foundation waste money, billions of taxpayers' money to train data. And if you do navigation, don't collect the data. You must learn like our child or our adult learn. Learn on the fly. If you learn on the blackboard, you will not learn driving, just like swimming, like riding bicycle. So don't collect the data. All the data are wrong. I call the sensitive motor recurrence wrong. And uh, unfortunately that we believe nature, science, like a God, and God make mistakes. Since 2015, all AI papers in nature conducted misconducts. Get to that later. Same thing in science, and science even did not do investigation. I submitted my report to nature. Nature investigated about 15 papers at that time. Only four also replied, it, but they all missed the boat. They only talk about something that's irrelevant. They try to use the particularities to hide their misconduct. Science even refused to investigate because as far as I know, there's no evidence science investigated because there's no response from the authors. By the way, those also are very well known. Don't want to mention the names. Everybody Body knows their big names. So alleged post-selection misconduct is, that's my allegation. I don't say that everything I said is false, right? It has to go to court. This is a fitting set, validation set, test set. Validation set is like mock exam. You do it in mock exam before you go to real test. So training stage, your first step, you drop many random neural net balls onto the purely terrain and each ball rolled down along the slope that measure the fitting area. The ball, each ball corresponding to neural net, you measure how it fits. But this is number two steps in the training stage is you select the luckiest network based on the height of the test set. So that's misconduct, all right? Use test set in the training stage, second step the training stage. So the method never tested. Nobody in the deep learning I know that tested. They lied, they cheated by saying the test set, but it's not tested because they use test set in the selection of the luckiest network. And they delete the data of the losers. There are millions of billions of the networks that lost it, they don't report it. For example, suppose I draw a ball there, 
And uh, then uh, once I'm long, I'm random, this is the neural network, each position corresponding to your neural network. You have billions, according to Jeffrey Hinton, 200 billions dimension. Uh, then you dropped it, then you get a pit, you get a local pit, and the more power you drop, the more likely you find the luckiest one, the luckiest one over here. And when you pick the luckiest one, you don't measure that one, you pick up the luckiest based on the salt line. Salt line is the test, test data. And uh, so this is the luckiest one. But in fact, according to cross validation, you should report at least the average performance. And you know, this you should at least report. To be better, you should report the luckiest one and the worst one. So the, uh, the problem is huge and everywhere. And we compared the luckiest network. This is the luckiest network takes so slow. This is the first 10 epochs. This is the first 500 epochs goes down so slow. And our math only train one network. We don't drop balls. We only have one network. That child already has optimal solution there, first epoch. You see that? It's already there, all right? And we published in the 2016 and the people just ignore us. Why conscious learning? You have overcome deep learning misconduct and every neural net must succeed. You cannot kill 999 kids and only one kid survive. Class speaks training result brittle system. Everybody knows that. I predict that deep learning is not going anywhere for autonomous navigation. Then you don't see commercialization of autonomous navigation if they continue to deep learning. So every neural net must learn consciousness, become more conscious over time, and then thinking and discover all by itself. If a machine cannot discover, it will know where to do navigation well. It must discover new tricks, new weakness in his behavior, and he must discover that, then he wants to solve the problem itself. So number one is talk about the awareness of any task requires awareness of longer and higher content beyond it. So any task must go beyond, that's lemma one. Then theory one said that for a learner natural artificial to understand contexts that are longer and higher than any context in a task that learns, such as purpose. If you drive, if you don't understand the purpose of driving, you there's no way to learn well. Evaluation of driving, how well you are doing, and so on. So it is necessary for the learner to conduct conscious learning for any task, unless it's very simple, not AI problem, like addition. And the machine can do addition very quickly. They don't need to know the purpose of addition and evaluation of the addition. Second framework. Now it's a little bit too much for me to really uh, make you understand, but I will encourage you to get this book, edition one, edition two from Amazon. Now I just give you some rough idea. If you're talking about any task, if you don't have a theory that apply to any task, and I was lying, all right? So the framework is very, very clear, uh, but difficult to understand. That's what the brain does. So you have X is sensor, Z is motor, but not symbols, uh, those are the muscles. Like what my muscle is making noise, I can say all kind of concepts. If I use symbol, I guess that. Then why is your brain? Then you provide a mapping to the brain. Then you predict the next input, next model. Very simple, but very rich. It's extremely difficult to understand. You have not learned universal Turing machine. And most of my students are double E students. Right? They have never learned the Turing machine. So you must make up, learn Turing machine, especially universal Turing machine. Many WE guys learn neural networks, but neural network has long, totally long, all right? They use feed forward. You must have a button up, top down, almost everywhere. Then you have concept here and some concepts like type here. And this is like trans type, this is like locations, like group. And I'll give you another diagram, which is better. 
And this is a simple task. The uh, concepts in the motor area and the simple concept will group into a higher context. This is like position of A, type of A, then you group them become a relation between A and B. And all these are invariant. If we talk about it just as perceptual learning, it's not efficient. You must do transfer invariant. And we did vision. Now vision is extremely difficult. We do it video. We don't use laser. We take the baby out. We don't model. Because how can you model the shape of a, a, a post of lamp under the concrete floor? How can you model the shape of the shadows? Forget about it. Baby, don't model them. Everything emergent. And we train and test our system on different sections. So we don't just test different time of day, different weather, and we test it. And many, many concepts learned on the fly. And we also learn parking example, and uh, we use vision and we don't use laser. Another mode is audition and audition including different speakers, including uh, interaction between people. Muscle is very important. Here, when some is 20 millisecond, you have sound like that. How do you have a class if the type coming here? Get label here, that's too late already. How do we label this context? In fact, our muscle does that, right? Our muscle is making, in this case, like, oh, our muscle already doing that. And you have a very dense muscle label before you realize I finished, oh, that's one name. Same thing for, for here, we, we have a cochlear model that uh, does not use uh, MFCC. MFCC is for human speech, not for any sound. And we train the system by speaking while you learn. You speak while you learn like a human baby is doing. So the reviewer really got lost. They say, everything different. Oh yes, everything's different. You speak while you learn, while you are doing navigation and you control. All right, you don't control based on feedback control. You learn control by doing it. Now, this is the language, and I suggest that you probably uh, need to spend time on developmental psychology and uh, how language is learned. In this case, we have two languages. This is a baby learn mother term, French and English, and learning in real time, and we have large vocabulary. And uh, this, uh, each neuron has two color. This yellow means a particular meaning, and here is blue means different language. So every neuron does not have a single label. Every neuron has many, many labels. Each label that you used in real time is a label, but it's not label. I have to use label in order to communicate. It's muscles. And the number four class is that we teach baby how to navigate. So we pick baby out for a walk and there's a reward here and it has sensors and has a GPS direction. In this case, make it simpler, so it has GPS, otherwise it's harder. We learn different classes and we train in a new setting. Baby learn how to plan, how to take a lower cost. Cost is the number of tiles we teach them on the fly. All right, we don't model. Everything here, no model. Everything is on the fly. Then uh, um, unfortunately, Xiang um, created a new test and turns out to be 100%. Later, I tell that you cannot be 100%, otherwise people will reject your paper because our human is really, really rigid. Oh, 100%, new setting, 100%, that must be fake. So I said, you need to find a breaking point. So he make it harder. So he, he start from a new place, a much farther position so he can fail. So this particular case, we have a totally different setting and it's a so robust, didn't have any error. I'm a robotics people that um, we have different robots and we design this and we design this one and we have also vehicles. All right, talk about the model and what you may think. You have learned FA. FA start with driver, which is a finite state machine in a, a computer sense of finite automata, right? So each state is like your muscle. Each input is like an image. Then you, your muscle change, your context change. So then double circle means accept, single circle means not accept yet. That's a very powerful model, but bad since it's a symbol. 
And if we have a vision, then we have a part of images, right? So we have attention. And uh, so we have to attention. We cannot just have a symbol input because symbols is monolithic. You have to look at the entire image. You have to look at sub images, patches. And you have many, many patches, flooding like a flood, all right? And uh, for Tori machine, it has a tape. And each time you only take one symbol input, they have a state, that state including internal representation and muscle. Then uh, a read high head, a muscle is different in the sense you can act back to the world. And uh, for Tori machine, you have five elements, state, input, next state, action output, and head motion. And uh, for universal Tori machine, it becomes general purpose. Now, I would suggest it's very difficult for you now because this is taking entire course to understand it. When I teach it, I have to teach it how to code it. So basically the input is not just data, input including program and the data. And a program was coded in five word sentences, state, new state, input, output, and head motion. And uh, special tooling machine is a special purpose, but if you have universal tooling machine like our PC, like our cell phone, and you can write program, you can write program and put the data, then this computer will apply the program to the data. It's a general purpose. That's what Alan Tooling is famous for. He was not famous for Turing machine, but for universal Turing machine. Now, if we do that, we do a little bit of uh, manipulation, this is new. I proved that the uh, finite automata or finite state machine is the driver of a Turing machine. That's new. And I said, the teaching computer science, they still didn't understand. They reject my paper because they don't understand it. They forgot about the basics. Now, if you use that model, then the Turing machine does not have internal representation. And our network has internal representation. So this is the state. State is a pattern. This is the image. Image could be a monolithic, it could be patches. You take attention. And if you symbol, you get stuck. You have little a, little b, little c, that's a symbol. Once you get symbol, you get stuck. And you have alpha, beta, gamma, delta, that are symbol, you get stuck. Never use symbol. And then you have patterns. This is like muscle, those are like pixels. Then your internal representation, you have receptive field bottom up and you receptive field top down. Remember, very important. Top down import has receptive field. Those are concepts. Then each neuron here corresponding to a lookup table in your finite state machine or Turing machine transition they call it. And this time this win, and you pay attention to a global view, this win you pay attention to this patch at this place and to this type. So attention is emergent and the patches and location are through sort of competition. You don't model it. Many people say, I do attention, I do modeling. Attention is so complex, never modeled it. So I have a symbol here so that you can understand the meaning because we have symbols. But remember, if they are muscles, they are the muscles, those are the pixels, those are pixels, three pixels, those are the muscles. Then remember this next state, I use symbol. Next slide, I will get rid of all the symbols. That's what the brain is. Now you see that. That's why neuroscience is so difficult because people just measure the spikes. One is spike, zero is no spike. And the brain is so difficult for neuroscientists, they don't understand Turing machine. They get lost. They will never be able to solve problems. A neuroscientist, he's a, a neuropsychologist. He said, John, brain is not my problem. Very interesting. A property, G for grounded, E for emergent, N for natural, I for incremental, S for scale closed, A for attentive, M for motivated, abstract. Not enough, but at least eight. That Genesema gets to the name of a little startup I helped to create. And we build robots that carry with you to teach interactively. Uh, Harden, right now he was teaching 
then we learn stereo. We don't do search left or right for the stereo because you don't model it. You know, this output is the disparity example. Then the output could be navigation actions. And our error is within about one pixel. This is really surprising, really surprising. And for navigation, we can use different sub-networks like a sub tooling machine and these tooling machines have different plans. They can learn the comparison. They can uh, look at the cost and learn the cost. Then we pick up a higher uh, performance plan and execute it. Now that goes to the uh, tooling machine for uh, conscious learning and that combined together. There are three conscious learning theory. They don't have models. Um, Bas, psychologist, he was the oldest one, actually. I, and he, I have quite a few in his big book. Christopher Fox is more recent. He's an Allen Institute, um, but he did not have algorithms. Roger and Paulos, uh, he got Nobel Prize for physics, but his theory about consciousness is no ground, all right? A to totally hypothesis, all right? I don't agree with him. And there are sketches. And uh, we have... Uh, G-E-N-I-S-A-M-A -A, all need C in order to do well. All right, C for consciousness. So life required degree of real time. So the paper was difficult to publish. And I tell you that we reject papers that are too good and uh, reject papers that are too bad, all right? So the paper was difficult to, uh, to accept, but finally some uh, conference uh, accepted. And uh, this is a $20 million province. And uh, this is the uh, conscious learning. And uh, this is 3D, 2D, 3D. And it's conscious learning required developmental ultra programming for general purposes. And if you have a chance, you probably look at the video to check out the papers. Those papers are available online. And uh, so we need to model development from prenatal development to postnatal development, from baby to adolescence to adulthood. So consciousness is not just outcome. You become more conscious. It's also a causality. You are conscious when you were a baby, you are a toddler. So in order to learn autonomously, it's both outcome and causality. Now the first algorithm started with single neuron. People said, John, you cannot do it. Oh yeah, you must because our human started with a single cell. The brain thing of a single cell. In order to single cell, then you have a global smoothness. Our human has a global smoothness becomes a finer, finer, because you end up with 100 billion neurons. Then uh, you don't do calibration, all right? Our robot does not do calibration for 3D, 2D. What is 2D? 2D is images and muscles. And you go back to 3D. You see, there's no inverse kinematics. And I taught inverse kinematics in the robotics class, and I regret it. Inverse kinematics is not what brain does because there are redundancies. In the previous talk, it's already enough redundancy. But in us, our human, you have so many muscles, it's a degree of freedom so much, you cannot do calibration. And we have impressive demonstration from Boston Dynamics, but that's a dead end. You know, it's only a gimmick. You must learn like baby. You learning on the fly. You outfit your your vehicle. Kama two. Only need two hundred dollars from Kama. In position of Kama three. Outfitting of uh, automobile with uh, most of the controls, including steering wheel. Now it's learning autonomously. So now outfitting a robot like a car is not expensive. So the series is that the new series is a don't use symbol, all right, not even class label, all emerging. And from baby time, uh, become increasingly autonomous and conscious. Then uh, learning has different modes, right? As for skull clothes, and if the skull closed and uh, then it's, uh, it's supervised inside like a remodeling slam, then it's called one, in our case, zero. Then the E, one for action imposed on the effect, zero uh, effect is free. Bias means that if you use pen sensor, sweet sensor, otherwise you don't use all zero. So the binary code, zero, one, zero, one, zero, one, you end up with eight types eight types, not just a supervised learning, but reinforcement learning.
and the combination. Then uh, we have symbol wise is the transition. Then we use vector, vector. They have vector transitions. Then you have internal representation Y, you input with context C, context transmission. So mass is very, very clear. It's not like AI, it's not expandable. And it's like black, black box. This network is not black box. It's a transparent box. Then you have sensible word, you have time. In unfolding in time, then you don't have a just recurrent systems, of course recurrent, but if when you're unfolding in time, it's very clear, very clear because different time have a different index. Then I'd like to mention a little bit of component analysis. And we use KB learning. KB learning is learn online and it gives you each feature corresponding cluster in the feature space in the respective field of the neural networks. And then now you represent a V from the input, the representation of the LCA is that you minimize the representation error. And then you, you have a task, representation task in terms of mathematics. Then you learn through time, you end up with the best representation. So it's the most efficient statistic. You learn in the most efficient way, end up with representation that has the least variation. This is better than that because you have so much noise and this we have little. This is based on statistics efficiency. If you forgot about statistics efficiency, reviewed it. And uh, then you have top K representation. You have a committee, pay committee member that vote for the output and how we can solve the problem of uh, local minima because uh, maximum likelihood is optimal. We don't need multiple networks, we only one. So this retention rate, this is the old feature uh, vector, the input, this is a post response, this is a pre-response, you multiply together, become behavior learning. This is a learning rate, a learning rate is a age, is a, is a function of age. Then you go to the uh, new vector and we randomly initialize this V, but once the age is one, then the original initial guess is forgotten totally. The first sample jumped to the vector right away. That's why also we ran the initial data weights only determine which wins, but never change the outcome of the network. All the networks from different initial guess are the same. So this is optimality. I don't want to spend time on that. Then talk about how you learn. And you have a robot that does not have a task. It does not do anything. So what? You said, you do imitation. I do not talk about pen sensor and a uh, switch sensor. This is part of motivation, no one. But in order to learn, you must do imitation. Just pen sensor and switch sensor, like reinforcement and people are doing, is very weak, very weak. We do imitation. And in this case, they are very similar from next year, but the teacher becomes self and the left hand becomes right hand. So when we make mistakes, we do discovery. So why imitation? Because the efficiency is much, much higher. And I have a diagram because you have a state, that state is generalized instead of all the possible trajectory. You have only M variation for each state, then the complexity reduced to a linear complexity. You just need to do, go home to do a few exercise. And these examples of how you do imitation, I'll give examples. Suppose I cried, then I heard the noise, then I continue crying, then I heard crying, crying will lead to what I hear. So what I cry, my next door baby will also cry. That's imitation because they hear the crying sound, you will promote your crying action. And about baby, he is in the crib. He also learns through imitation. So that's why when baby cry, other baby also cry. But this is too simple, John. Yes, everything else that's still the same, all right? You have multiple effector, multiple pixel, multiple effector, multiple pixel, and totally the same. The theory is simple. 
So the theorem four said that the same thing will explain creativity, including your research. Now I'm talk about chips and the chips is hard because why we do chips? And I'm not a chip guy and I have to do that because the, the problem right now is the computational power. We don't have a powerful computers that can take with you to drive and in real time, real time learning, on the fly learning, on chip learning, and this what I designed, all right? Give them, I'm already 65 hours designing a circuit for this is CMOS, uh, CMOS design. And the challenge was tremendous, I tell you, tremendous. DAPA had a project called Synapse. How much money they spent? They did not solve the problem, all right? Because their chip did not learn real time on the chip. So you have a neuron. How many neurons? 200 billion or 100 billion. Each neuron needs to connect to or any other neuron. Not all the ages, but at least certain time period, especially when the brain's small, you need to connect to all the neurons. So huge problem of interconnections. Intel has a chip. You probably heard about it. Loihi. Loihi when Loihi too, they do not solve this problem. They did not understand the problem. Just like what I said, I solved the brain problem. People said people don't believe in it because they don't know the criteria of solve the problem. And I do. But I'm not sure that I'm 100% correct. I just let you know this issue is extremely interesting. We changed the landscape of AI. So now you have this when they try to reduce complexity. In this case, we have a Q bus, uh, reduce the complexity. And the conclusion was that a complete theory of general purpose, truly machine-based imitation, and learn 3D events, create a general creativity using images and a 2D model, carry out program to 3D, 3D to 2D to 3D. And the major device here to take home is without motor imposition, free of annotation. So don't follow ImageNet. ImageNet with annotation that's a dead end. It's a paradigm shift in AI. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking about. Human-like autonomous learning is theoretically sound. Sound, S-O-U-N-D. The future is brain science, brain noise chip at about 100 hertz. And that's a tremendous challenge, engineering. Thank you very much. I enjoy your questions. Uh, thanks for your excellent speech, Professor Ren. Uh, I have one question. Um, in your report, uh, you proposed the security of conscious learning in natural network. Uh, what do you think about this method, the prospect of this method when using in the field of manufacturing or engineering? Good question. Huh? If you have a task specific setting, like conveyor belt, like charge doubling, he was doing like doing this, then yeah, yeah, you don't yes, need to yes. But if you want to have a person that you can teach, a robot coming here, teach, say so you have changed the model, give example, or you want to hire technicians that have a new model or for a car, then you need a conscious learning. So I call the muddy, in that book I call the muddy. Muddy means a very, very unclear. You cannot formulate in a mathematics. Oh. You can only formulate in this case in maximum likelihood, but it does not have a symbol. If you learn given up maximum likelihood and you always have a notation available. Right now, we don't have available, but we do use maximum likelihood framework. So mathematics has totally changed. Then you can talk about consciousness. Otherwise, you cannot talk about consciousness because math is not enough, but some tools like maximum likelihood is useful. Okay. You solve uh, the local minima problem by using maximum likelihood because our criteria is the most efficient statistic, just like you, all right? In your brain, you probably don't believe what I said. Your brain is optimal based on your experience. If our model is roughly correct, because I understand how the, the cell can do, what cell can do, what cell cannot do. And what a cell can do right now is optimal. I think it's from evolution. 
Oh, okay. Although the environment is not the best. If not, you probably get a better teacher will learn faster, all right? So environment is not the best, but your brain is the best for your experience. Yes. So what yes. you are doing right now, need the consciousness. Yes, yes. It is uh, totally different from machine learning and deep learning. Totally okay. different. Yeah, 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 totally different. Totally different. Okay, thanks for your answer. Thanks for your answer. Thank you. Uh, is anyone has any question? Is there any question? Okay, since time is limited, those who have questions can email with our professor, okay? Thank, thank you, thank you, Professor Wen.